one more transfer comment, um, and it's just that at this point, there's never been a time where the value of Premier League experienced players, especially defenders, in my opinion, are, have been higher. And I know that you know there are premiums placed on players that most would consider average or certainly just not flashy. Um, but that's exactly what I think we need at this point. I mean, I'll take a pass all day on guys like Koulibaly or Manolis or any of these big name defenders from the continent. And, uh, and you know, they're going to take two or three years to adapt to the Premier League. I mean, guys like Mangala, Daily Blint, I mean, there, there are some good purchases, uh, you know, aside mm -hmm. from that, that have contributed very early on to their new teams. But uh, in general, they're kind of hit or miss. And, it, and before you really see the best of them, it's a season two, even three seasons, if they last that long before they go back. So, I mean, we can't risk. I mean, our window is we got to sign people that can help us get back up. And to me, taking guys from the bottom 14 teams in the Premier League who've played and held their own in the league for a few years, who want to play in Europe and aren't now, who would like to have presumably more talented players in front of them, I mean, you'd think that would be something that would be a great opportunity rather than trying to pry guys away from Champions League teams on the continent for Europa League football here. Uh, they don't have to be English per se. Uh, they just have to be Premier League experience. So, you know, Fredo, uh, who was uh, the fellow Saints uh, fan, Saints supporter uh, that I talked about, uh, asked, you know, who would be the players from the clubs below you'd like to see us target? Any interest in the likes of Ryan Frazier, Matt Ritchie, Jean-Michel Serri? Um, he says William Zaha, who apparently is Wilfred Zaha's younger brother. Um <laughs> You know, I'd add guys like Dunk, Maguire, Ake, Chilwell. Say, the, the first name for me is Harry Maguire. I and, you know, I haven't really heard that much about him. This, I mean, he was incredible, I think, of the World Cup. He was good after that. Um, you know, not so much this season, but I, want uh, no I haven't heard English, so much this season. Yeah, I want a no-nonsense English defender who can come in and partner with Holding. Um, I think he brings a... Uh, the the World Cup experience, I think that he does have that little chip on his shoulder where he will push defenders and lead. Mike, I've been saying it all season. I want someone who's going to turn around and rip you a new asshole when you make a mistake, and I think he will give us that. And he's Premier League ready. Um, and, you know, I can see him in a few seasons from now going to a United and, and doing a Rio Ferdinand where he becomes an absolute um, – uh, legend for a club like that. So why not grab him now? Uh, I, I think he will be expensive, but why not go go in for it? He's Premier League ready, and he, I think he's trainable. I think he's coachable. That's that's the thing for me. I mean, you, you, we got to spend money wisely. And, and from everything I'm hearing, Raul, his inclination is to go abroad. Uh, that scares me a bit. I just, you know, how many more – funky pieces can we throw in there and then a year later or two years later we're talking about them like we are Mustafi. I mean it's it's these guys are good enough already and we know they're good enough already they're just maybe not the fastest you know high-flying person that we see performing well in the Champions League because they're playing for teams that are never going to make the Champions League. Mm. John I mean who would you identify or, or are you on board with that strategy? I mean there's there's so many I mean you look at Wolves um, I actually think it'd be really difficult to get most of the players out of there because the trajectory that club's on and if they're really buying into it and the manager and, you know, they're investing a lot of money. But uh, you mentioned Dendonka. He's not a bad player. Um, yeah. you know, maybe, he's on one, though. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a very good player, Diego Yota. But if you're looking in defence, I mean, they've got Ryan Bennett, Willie Bolly, uh, Connor Cody. They're all great players. Yeah, Cody Keane, Keane at Everton, Maguire. Uh, Nathan Aki, I really like, who... I think would be cheaper just because he's not British, so you don't get the premium. That is one thing we do need to address is I think we'll be below the quota for British players for next yeah, season. Because Ramsey's gone. Um, yeah, Ramsey and Welbeck gone, so yeah. yeah. Um, so that is something we're going to have to spend some money somewhere. Uh, Fraser is another player who I do like. Um, the price tag would be the thing that would concern me, again, with some of those. Um, some of these guys have gotten too hyped that it's that they're no longer – they're going to go to, you know – one of the three clubs yeah. that can pay the premium that we that we won't. I won't the, say the, the the one issue I have with like the defenders we're talking about, when you talk about Keane, Maguire, you know, Tarkovsky, um, Burnley, they're all good players. 
you know, they're all they're all decent defenders. They're all very serviceable. I think they're fine. But they are in teams that work a system. They know how to play it. And they're all drilled very well. My worry is that if you get one of those players in, they come into the team, are they going to be as good? Because they come into what is a, essentially at the moment a dysfunctional team um, that doesn't necessarily have a clear identity on the way it plays. If we if we had a clear style of playing identity, then I'd be more confident about saying, yeah, you can go and get uh, Dunk or Duffy from Brighton, you know, who are both really good centre backs. They love to defend. You know, they are properly no nonsense, and just say, yep, yeah, you come in, you come like lead marshal of the defence. Um, it, that's that's the one worry with it. But the fact we don't look within the Premier League itself for players is it, always kind of baffled me. And not just the Premier League as well, like below into the Championship. There, there's some fantastic players. You look at how uh, James Madison, who's at Leicester, how well he's done this season. He looks like an absolutely Rolls Royce of a player. He's lovely to watch on the ball. He's great skill, talent, through balls, gets goals, assists. Um, and he just, there was just a kid they plucked out of the Championship. Jason talks about a guy, a young kid, I think he's 18, Dan James at Swansea. Absolute rapid pace. We've been screaming for a winger for so long. He's, he, you know, he's 18 years old. He's in, in a mid-table championship side. You might be able to tempt Swansea with 10, 15 million quid. Sometimes you just have to take a punt. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Well, but Rob that, Holding's an example of that. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's a Why player. Why do that more? Yeah, yeah, that's a player who you can go, this one's a little bit of a free roll. Okay, we can take that. We'll, we'll give it a go. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, you get some Premier League experience. A few years' time, we can sell him to an Everton or Watford or, you know, whoever. Maybe we get our money back. But th- this is the sort of deals that we have to look at now um, going forward until we're back into the Champions League regular and got that revenue back in. Because you're not going to be able to go out and compete at the top table. It, it's just pointless trying to. Yep, I couldn't agree more.